Greetings runners, Ed Budd here and today I have a comparison shootout video between two ASICS shoes from their energy saving series, the ASICS Glide Ride and the Evo Ride. Before we get into the comparison guys, please remember to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications down below so you're aware when new videos are launched. Give the video a like, comment below and make sure you share it with your friends. I'll throw some stats up on the screen for you right now. Between the two shoes, as you can see, there's a very similar heel to toe drop. The stack heights vary, obviously, with the glide ride being much higher off of the ground, and there's about 20 grams difference between the glide ride and the Evo ride. So what are the main differences between the shoes? Well, there is a substantially lower stack height in the ASICS Evo ride. I think it's 22 to 17 millimeters in this one and about 31 to 26 millimeters in the glide ride. I found this shoe over my first few runs in it a tad more stable than the glide ride. You don't feel as if you're anywhere near as far off the floor as you do in the glide ride. Through the foot strike as well, I found it much more stable. It just felt as if I was planting my foot down. I didn't feel as if I needed to think about it too much. Both have that ASICS glide sole technology built into the midsole. And basically what that means is that the midsole kind of curves up here towards the end of the shoe, towards the toe box area. So as you kind of plant your foot down, you kind of roll off as you would do perhaps in Nike Zoom Fly. It kind of promotes like a kind of rolling motion. So as the runner hits down onto the terrain, they kind of roll through, something like that anyway. I certainly felt that guide sole technology in both shoes. I've extensively used the glide ride and also put some decent miles now into this one. Still much more testing to be done there. To me, I think it feels a bit more pronounced in the Evo ride, though I have done kind of faster miles in that up to now. Perhaps as things even out a little bit, I think perhaps the feeling will be similar across both shoes. The shoes fit very clearly into two different categories for me. The Evo Ride, it's a faster tempo type shoe, kind of where you lock into a speed and you kind of stick with it. For me, that's around about seven minutes, 20 seconds per mile these days. The Glide Ride's a heavier shoe, I think, and really serves those longer runs better. Typically, I'm doing those at around about eight minutes to seven minutes, 45 per mile, where comfort and cushion are more of a priority. The Evo Ride's midsole, it's much thinner. It provides less cushion than its cousin, the Glide Ride. I'm finding that the Glide Ride's a lot more cushioned, actually, than the Evo Ride. The additional foam in the midsole on this one grants the runner a much softer ride, but at the cost of about 20 grams per shoe. For me, this shoe really shines at around about 7 minutes 45 pace. I did a 14 mile run in this one a little while ago, felt absolutely effortless really. It kind of felt a really sustainable effort in the glide ride. I just kept rolling on and certainly comfort wise, it really hit the spot. Both uppers are an engineered mesh type material. They both give quite a plush and refined kind of feel. Kind of feel like you're wearing a smoking jacket when you're wearing both of these shoes. I think construction and build quality actually of both of them are very, very high. I can see both of these shoes certainly lasting the test of time, providing the runner with no durability issues whatsoever. Certainly ASICs make a very hard wearing shoe, that's for sure. The Evo Ride Upper is a little bit more refined than the Glide Ride Upper. I think the tongue on the Glide Ride's quite a bit more cushioned, there's quite a bit more foam in it than the Evo Ride. This one seems like they've reduced it down a, at least a little bit for ASICs. You know they kind of like putting a lot of material into the uppers of their shoes. I think the Evo Ride really does benefit from that kind of pared down approach. It certainly does feel a little bit more nimble on foot than the Glide Ride. Both shoes, I've got to say, it's really easy to achieve a good lockdown. When you do cinch the shoes up over the top of the midfoot, it really does feel like you get a great lockdown. I didn't have any issues really with the shoes loosening up at all over any sort of length of miles. I feel this one's a little bit more nimble, felt very safe in my stride as I was going through my run today. I did feel a little bit of slipping when I hit a couple of kind of metal grates on the floor. Um, they're kind of like ones you can lift up, I guess, so that people can go and look in and do whatever with some pipes. But I did hit one of those and I went flying, actually. I certainly found with the glide ride, if I hit any type of slippery metal surfaces like that, I would go flying as well. The rubber on here is very, very smooth. It's kind of almost flat, really, on the glide ride. You've got that EVA plate here as well. So those are probably the things, along with the extra foam, 
that are adding up for that extra weight. That kind of full contact outsole on the Evo Ride certainly is my preference between the two shoes. The Evo Ride just doesn't feel so sort of clunky really and bulbous on foot or underfoot as well as the Glide Ride. It's quite a slight runner and quite a tall runner as well. I'll put my weight up on the screen. I'm not too worried about people seeing my weight. I don't really look at it like that. I am what I am. I am what I am and that's it. There's bigger things in the world to worry about. I often struggle when shoes go past a certain weight. They just feel really unwieldy on foot. I think the Glide Ride was just about as weighty as I'd want to go with a shoe. It did feel a little bit like that, as I say, with the Glide Ride, but it certainly is a shoe that once I get going, um, I kind of forget about the weight a little bit. I certainly own heavier shoes than this, and this one still feels good to me. I think ASICs are really making some efforts to try and move forward with the times. You know, we've got the Evo Ride, we've got the Nova Blast that they've just released. They're trying to improve, they're trying to innovate. I think that's something to be commended. I think the Evo Ride's a bit of a call to arms, really, from a company that are making huge changes in both management and their designs. And I'll tell you what, people are really innovating at the moment. Have you seen that new Hoka 10.9? It's uh, certainly interesting. I guess you can't increase the stack heights anymore, so, you know, we're going to go outwards from the left and right side now. At the front and the back of the shoe, let's, like, make the midsoles and outsoles even longer almost like skis i guess i'd be really interested to actually see a downhill racer and see how they actually could use that shoe i'm not discounting it you know i never discount anything in terms of price there's now actually about only 10 15 pounds difference between these two shoes i think you need to consider usage very carefully here. What are you going to use the shoe for? Which one's going to suit you best? Which one of the two shoes is going to kind of give you what you need? I think if you want lots of cushioning over the miles, then the two foams used in the Glide Ride midsole will hit the spot. I think if you want that plush and very present upper for those long runs, then the Glide Ride will do the job. On the flip side of that, if you want a faster, more tempo type shoe with an old school upper, then I think the Evo Ride will supply the butter. It's not going to work as an easy day shoe. I found that out to my peril earlier on. Seven miles with four miles fartlek and some kind of warm up, worn down miles that just doesn't really want to work for those worn down miles whatsoever. I think it's too firm for recovery miles. This one certainly, if you're going to be hitting things a bit harder. But I see this as a worthy opponent to something like the Nike Zoom Fly or perhaps the Hoka Carbon X as well. I would suggest though that this shoe is a lot more narrow than the Glide Ride, so do test it out in store if you can. So two shoes, two very similar uppers, two very different midsoles for different areas of your training. That's all for today guys, thanks for watching through to the end of the video. I hope this helps you make an educated decision if you're gonna go for one of ASIC's current models. Please remember to subscribe, hit the bell down below for notifications of when new videos are launched, like, comment, and share with your friends. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.